Hello everyone, I'm the Solo Gamer, and welcome to Sid Meier's Civilization Beyond Earth. This time, the first 250 turns. That's right, I am actually going to be able to play the first 250 turns this time, and uh, one of the biggest things that I'm excited about is that it's all going to be live. That's right, I am circling the United States right now. Yes, lovely. Um, actually, I see a lot of color in there, that's beautiful. And a lot of, like... Circular things, which, I mean, I don't know what those would be, but, uh, it looks kind of scary. Regardless, we're getting into the game. So we're gonna go into Setup Game, and right now you can see that we have a difficulty setting. So one thing that people were asking about in my last two or three videos was what, you know, what difficulty I was using. And I honestly, I have no idea, because this option wasn't available at the time. So. Right now, we can see all of the different difficulty settings that we have, and they're all named after famous spacecraft, which is awesome. Of course, Sputnik being the first satellite launched by Russia, or the Soviet Union, I should say. The Mercury, the Vostok, the Gemini, the Soyuz, and the Apollo. Yes, and Apollo is impossibly hard, which I don't even want to attempt that right now. We're going to go with Gemini, because that's hard, and uh, that's what I usually play on in Civilization. So we'll do that. Game pace, standard, that's fine. Now, I was going to put out another 100 turns video, however, this opportunity arose, and I took it. So, we are going to play as the Slavic Federation in honor of that 100 turns video, because that's the sponsor that I played as uh, in that video. So, I might as well just play them right now. So, the Slavic Federation has orbital units that stay in orbit 20% longer, which is obviously awesome, and the first one launched grants a free technology. And, of course, I want to point out that I did mislabel these as factions before. But these are actually sponsors. They are sponsoring this colony mission. So the Slavic Federation, composing of Russia and the Baltic states, isn't necessarily one country. It could be, you know, the Baltic states are still split up between all of those countries that are there. Russia still exists. It's just they're pooling their resources together to sponsor this new colony exploration. So the same thing goes with Franco-Iberia, Pan-Asian Cooperative, ARC, uh, Brasilia. This is a big one that's uh, that people are confused about because you know, South American countries don't necessarily want to cooperate with each other sometimes. Especially over football, don't even get them started on that. Um, United Kingdom still probably exists. We don't know what Earth looks like. I mean, we do from that image that we saw, you know, on the main menu. But we don't know what the borders look like. So please keep that in mind. These are just sponsors and they're pooling the resources together. They're not necessarily one entire country. So, with that all said and done, let's go right into the advanced setup because I love looking at these. So, of course, we have six sponsors right here. We're playing on a small map because the other map seemed kind of large. We are going to play on an equatorial map because, well, I think it looks cool. Well, at least the description. So, we have all of these random worlds to choose from. You know, Taigan being punishingly cold at, you know, where best lands are found along the coastlines of rivers. That's kind of cool as well. Protean, which is one ocean, one Pangaic continent. Of course, Equatorial, which is the one I'm choosing, which is a rapidly spinning world with a bulging equator and day-slash-night cycles much shorter than Earth's, which is why I chose this, because it seems like a cool description. Atlantean is more of like a... Ah, uh, what would you call this? More like a, a marshland that encompasses the entire planet. That's the only way I can, I can picture this. And of course, we have Archipelago. And, you know, random world that you can choose from. So we're going to play on an Equatorial one. Map terrain. So people were wondering if there were different terrains in the game because they only saw basically the same type of theme throughout the last couple videos. So I kind of want to assure you guys that there are different uh, regions. So we have lush, fungal, desert, uh, random, of course, that would be whatever. I also want to point out that the game that I was playing on last time was a lower version than this current one. So it was an earlier build of the game. So they might not have been ready at the time, which is why we have these options right now. World age is going to be 4 billion. Of course, this relates to how hilly or smooth the world is. Obviously, 3 billion years since the birth of the planet would be more rough. 5 billion more smooth. So we're going to go in the middle. We have temperature, temperate, of course. We have all of these ones to choose from. Rainfall, same thing. Resources, all the stuff that's in Civilization V. In fact, if we go to Terran, we have one more option, and that's for sea level. But we're going to go back to Equatorial, because that one's kind of cool, and I haven't done that yet. We have all the victory types, and down here, we have some pretty cool ones, like Don't Stagger Starts. That one's actually, you know, for people that were wondering, you don't necessarily have to stagger your starts. You can all start at the same time, everybody's in the game, Bravo. Okay, that's fine. We also have Frenzied Aliens, which is like the Raging Barbarians option in Civilization V, which alien aggression and spawn rates are greatly increased, which means that they are going to be way more aggressive 
than they currently are if you're not near their nest. We also have like no city raising, no resource pods, quick combat movement, stuff like that. But uh, this is all set to go, so that's perfect. We'll do all of that. Okay, we're going to go into our colonists, and let's take a look here. So we have scientists, refugees, aristocrats, engineers, and artists. Now, last time, I was really not paying attention to my health as much. So I think this time around, I want to make sure that I pay attention to my health and keep it above the red, because I don't want people to get unhealthy or start dying. I, I don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and, get, and grab either aristocrats or artists. Which one? Do I want culture or energy? You know what? Let's do energy, because that's more of the currency for us. So that's perfect. Okay, next we have a spacecraft. Continental surveyor, retrograde thrusters, tectonic scanner, fusion reactor, and life form sensor. That's actually really cool, considering you could find all of the alien nests in the map. Uh, however, it would look kind of weird, considering we don't know what the map looks like. So it would just be random specks of alien nests all over the world. Um, I don't think I'm going to do this one right now. I think I'm going to do retrograde thrusters, which allows us a wider area for choosing where to land our first city. So we'll do that one. And finally, we have cargo. We can choose from hydroponics, laboratory, raw materials, weapon arsenal, and machinery. So, of course, we have a worker unit. That's great. Soldier unit, great. Uh, pioneering technology. That's actually really cool, too, because then you can settle or start trading right off the bat. Then again, if there's nobody around you or... If you know, the stations haven't come down yet, there's really no point to start, ex you know, expanding very, very quickly. Hydroponics is okay, again, with an extra population at the start, uh, but that might lead to some unhappiness issues a little bit earlier in the game. So I'm going to go ahead with the clinic building, because I want to make sure that my happiness is above average. And that is about it, so let's go ahead and start the game. It is my duty to keep these men and women alive. It is my burden to know that I cannot. They must make their own future. I can guide them, I can give them tools to survive, but I cannot control them. Their choices will be their own, as will their consequences. And that is the personal log from Vadim Petrovich Kozlov, the leader of the Slavic Federation. Alright, let's take a look at our world and see where we are. Oh, okay. So this is... Wow, I like this a lot. It's more like an orangey-type world. It's a grassland. It's not necessarily a desert. And these are all plains, too. Oh, I like this. Look at the trees! They're like... Ah, oh, they're beautiful. <laughs> they're beautiful little tree spirally things. God, that's awesome. Okay. Well, we have a large area to choose from to settle down. And I, honestly, I mean, I think that settling right in here will be kind of good. We'll be actually... Well, you know what? If I settled right on the fibers, I can make a channel through here. I think that that still counts as a channel if we do that. In Civilization Five, it does. I, I would assume it, it would. But then again, if this just ends, like, right over here, there's really no point to do that. You know what? Let's just do it. We are going to miss out on the, uh, the extra production. Actually. Yeah, the extra production with the plantation, but you know what? I think that channel is worth it. Especially if it provides, you know, strategic purposes. So let's go ahead and settle down. The city of Krabost. There we go. Lovely. Also, I have these, uh, these strategic... Oh. Did we lose the... Wait a minute. It, I think we just killed the fibers. We must have blew them out of the way with our thrusters. <laughs> Dang it. Well, we're still getting the, the output. You see right there, we still have four food and one production. So, it, we didn't lose that. But we did lose the, uh, the icon, which I don't really care about. That being said, I have the icons turned on because some of you are wondering if, the, you know, this was an option to add that in there. And it is. If we come up here to the little eye, we can click on that and we can get all of our, you know, normal map options. Like trade routes, which we can't show you right now, but I, I will do that a little bit later. Hex grid. Yield icons. And then, of course, the, um, the icons for the resources and the artifacts, which is great. So I'll keep those on because I like, you know, seeing where the resources are very, very easily and clearly. So one thing that I want to explain to you guys that I didn't really explain in detail the last time was the strategic resources and the, you know, standard resources in the game. So these are the main three strategic resources that affect late game units and buildings. We have Xenomass, Floatstones, and Firaxite. And those, like I said, control the late game units and uh, buildings. Then, of course, we have stuff like the Chitin and the Fruit, which help your city grow and expand. And of course, we'll see more as we go, like, uh, of course, the algae. Plus one food with a work barge. So stuff like that. 
And then of course we have titanium and petroleum, which you're going to need for more of the orbital units. Um, but we'll get to that stuff a little bit later once we get uh, those required resources and technologies. So we are spawning right in Miasma right now, which is not good. I think I want to explore this little tip here and see what my, uh, what my little settling did here. Okay, I think I made the right choice. Settling right here, we can connect these two areas up. That being said, I mean, it, it still could end, like, right there, but it does save us an extra, maybe, three or four turns going around this little area if we need to somehow defend, you know, whatever's in here. So I think I made the right call. Right, yes, the victories. Now, I'm not going to explain all of these victories here. You can pause the game if you would like to see all of the different, uh prequisites to win these, but I'm just going to say that it's basically like Civilization V. In a very, very broad aspect, you have all these different victories to go for, and you're going to be fighting over protecting the end of the game for yourself. Okay, choose one production. Right. I'm going to go ahead and work on a soldier unit for nice quick defense so that uh, if any aliens start to come in here, we can defend our colony. And for research. Now, I cannot show you guys the late game research. I have to stay in this general area of 250 turns. So, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead into Ecology, because I want to grab the Ultrasonic Fence. Now, I explained this a little bit in the last episode, in which the Ultrasonic Fence keeps out aliens from up to two tiles away from your city. Not only that, but you get a quest that allows you to also add these Ultrasonic Fence parameters to trade convoys. And that's what I absolutely want this for. I want to be sure that my trade convoys are perfectly safe and uh, will not get attacked by aliens. We're also going to go ahead and queue up uh, pioneering to start expanding, of course, with the colonists, or start trading. Hopefully something by that point spawns and uh, we can start trading to it. All right, let's go over this way. And, wow, okay, this is really going on for a, a while. Pretty good. I really like this uh, this terrain right now. It's very, like, savannah-y. Savannah-y? Sure, why not? <laughs> I, I really do like it. it. It seems more Earth-like than alien. I mean, of course, these forests are very, very alien. Uh, and, the, you know, the ocean is kind of purpley with some oily effects near the coastline. I think that might be the uh, the coral or whatever is there. But um, this seems like the most Earth-like planet I've been to so far, which is great. And there we go. Finally, the tip of the... Oh, we have a big, bad kraken. Right. I will try to entice the Kraken later on to attack one of my units, just so you can see what this powerful unit can do. But it is one scary mother trucker. Really. It is one of the elite aliens in this game. And that's all I'm going to say right now, and we'll get to that a little bit later, hopefully. So that's the end of this. We can go right in here, or we can go right through here, which is, like I said, very, very strategic. Especially if he's going to stay here, because we can't really go next to him, because he will... Uh, attack us later on in the game and they start forming a little colony so you'll see like maybe two to three Krakens later in the game all clumped up together just moving together it's quite terrifying okay and we also see some coral out there perfect wow listen to the music goodness me that was awesome <laughs> but uh, yes we explored that great let's go ahead and explore I think yeah let's come down south Oh, we have a sea dragon approaching our colony. Well, you know what? I want to stay slightly passive in the beginning. And if they start attacking me, then I'll, of course, I'll strike back. But right now, let's uh, let's stay out of conflict with the aliens. And, of course, Klebost has grown from size 1 to size 2. Okay, you bring in some friends. I'm not liking that. Uh, I, mm, I'm not afraid to kill you. Or at least hurt you a little bit. Quest updated. Found an outpost. Right, okay, so we have to research pioneering. So this is going to prompt us to settle an outpost, and uh, after that's done, we'll complete the mission. Go home. Adios. <laughs> Goodbye. Stay away from my colony. Especially my capital, too. That's, ugh. Get out. This planet is mutually ours now. You're just going to have to accept that. I mean, come on now. We landed here. Give us some spa- I said give us some space, man. You're really encroaching on us. God. You're encroaching on our civil liberties. Goodness me. <laughs> oh, boy. And we have some Firaxite down here, which, in my opinion, is a fantastic resource. Considering they finally found a way to incorporate their name into the game. You know, Firaxis. Firaxite. Perfect. 
All right, head down this way and down here, and we see some copper. Great. Okay, so with a mine, that'll give us plus one energy a turn. And a station was discovered, Far Base 1, which grants uh, two energy and two research or science to any city that establishes a trade route with it. Well, good. Where is that? Oh, look at... Oh, that's perfect. That is so perfect. That's kind of easily defendable. Um, and we'll just come right along here once we clear out this miasma. That's great, actually. One thing to note is that these stations can actually upgrade to different tiers, and they can also fall and be destroyed. Uh, I want to point that out as well, because I've actually seen that happen. Uh, let's see. It will improve to tier 2 when any player completes a trade route to the station. So, basically, once we set up a connection, it'll upgrade to tier 2, which grants 4 energy and 2 science. So, more energy per turn, which is great. And, of course, going to tier 3 would be a little bit, you know, harder. So, I really, really like that feature, and... It definitely doesn't feel like the typical city-state. Oh my. Oh, okay, so we have some basalts over there. And this gigantic canyon. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, let's just, uh... Yeah, go into the miasma. You have no choice. And look at that! We've got some uh, wolf beetles standing over a resource pod. Lovely. Get off! <laughs> oh boy. You guys are still hanging around my base. I, I really... I would prefer if you went home... I don't, I don't want to have to kill you, buddy. All right, do not attack me. There, ooh. Okay, well, there must be a nest around here. In fact, it's right there, so let's get out of here. I don't want to be anywhere near a nest with this explorer, because the explorer can get killed in one hit. That's how, um, that's how undefended these things are. Well, at least in the early game. So, inside the resource pod, you found a cache of laboratory equipment from Old Earth, made with precision techniques that are difficult to replicate on this planet. The equipment is eagerly welcomed by your scientists, providing 19 research. Great. And that also prompts a quest log, which is gifts from home. Our sponsor had the foresight to send resource pods ahead of our expedition to be waited... Uh, what? To be waiting when we arrive. There we go. Okay. Parts to a large research instrument have been found in this pod. The other pieces are probably around here somewhere. So we need to find another resource pod to complete this one. In fact, I think this one goes up and up and up until we find pretty much a lot of them in the area. Alright, so we really can't sneak by these guys, and if technically they will attack us if uh, if they see us here, so we should probably leave. We also have a river coming down here that looks like it's drying up before it even reaches this canyon, which uh, is kind of a waste of water. But you know what? I'm not complaining. It's probably all going to this alien nest anyways. They're probably siphoning it with their alien hive. No! Well, good thing you went this way, but you're not going all the way over there. That's not going to happen. Go this way. And we also have our soldier, which is going to help defend the area. And I'm probably going to send him... Oh boy, where am I going to send him? Well, you know what? Come over this way. I want you to protect this area from any aliens coming down here. The rover will, of course, come back into our land. Heal up, and then I'll send him up north. Looks like it's another coast over here. Alright, what are we working on next? A worker? Uh, we don't have much to work on. We only have two tiles that we can work on, considering these are miasma. And we can't clear that until we grab alien biology, which is right in here. Which is 50 turns away, which I don't think we're going to do. Yeah, clear miasma. Oh, and worker miasma immunity. Okay, so that's why I wasn't taking damage with my workers. Now I know, because I'm reading. <laughs> yeah, it seems like I was just rushed a lot into... Uh, well, I wasn't being rushed. I was rushing myself to learn the game as fast as I could because I only had a limited amount of time. So I was skipping over a very, very important details that I'm finally finding now. Okay, so you know what? We might as well build a worker anyways. Uh, I don't think it costs any maintenance. It might, but you know what? Let's just build it anyways because we're going to start expanding outwards. Our next tile is going to be the chitin, and then it's probably going to be stuff over here. So, yeah, let's do that. In fact, I might even try to grab these fruit. Which, I mean, if I was on an alien world, I wouldn't be so eager to try the, uh, the native, uh, foliage. Foliage? No, what would you call fruit and harvests on a... What, what would you call that? I don't know, I guess just harvests? No, it doesn't sound right. I know there's a name for it. I'm just not entirely sure at this point in time. Yeah, foliage is more like the plant life. I guess just alien fruit. Sure, let's just call it that. Because <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, Krabosta has grown again. 
We are down to five health, which means that if we try to settle, it's going to be very, very uh, difficult for us to bring back up that health really quickly. So we kind of have to watch that. Okay, come back over here. And uh, you know what? Go over there. And then we'll heal you next turn. Okay, we have some Resolent, which I would assume is kind of like Chitin. I want to thank you guys for helping me out with uh, the pronunciation of Chitin and also what Chitin is. So Chitin is essentially the material in a beetle's uh, outer shell. And we can use that for different things. Um, so I would assume that Reslin is something similar, but in these gooey little thingy. Oh my god, those are scary. I, oh, I would not want to farm. I wouldn't even go near those. Like, why would you want to farm something like that? That is just terrifying. Okay, well, regardless. Um, yeah, just fortify here. And make sure that nothing comes this way. Please. All right, we're going to heal this rover. So next turn, we'll start moving out. When Coyote learned he was the only one of his kind on the new planet, his howl echoed through the rifts and off the distant hills. Again, I love this quote. Uh, all quotes, I believe, are purely made up. And, well, I, I don't know. I haven't really listened to all of the quotes in detail, but this doesn't exist. The Uncle Never Clone stories, I, I looked it up. It doesn't exist, so I assume that these are all made up. But, I don't know. We'll see. All right, so we have the Miasmic Propulsor, which we're going to use to clear out this miasma. It is an orbital unit that we launch, and it clears out the miasma in the radius over time, which is great. The Vivarium, which gives us plus two food. It's a building. And the Ultrasonic Fence, which prevents aliens from approaching within two tiles of the city. I assume that also means coastal. I didn't actually get to test that out, but I assume it is all tiles, which means coastal, uh, ocean, whatever, basically. Yeah, I'm not killing you. You're tempting me, but I'm not killing you. You're just a very curious little sea dragon, aren't ya? <laughs> Alright, uh, head up this way? Yeah, head up this way. Going into the plains, which look more like a... Oh, I don't know, like a dry lava. Well, no, it doesn't even look like lava. It just looks like a desert, to be honest, but it's not. Alright, go up north here, and... This looks... Wow, this island is, uh... Pretty small up here, which is good. That That's very, very good. It means that we won't actually get somebody uh, trying to colonize all the way up here, which is kind of good for me. I'm looking at a city location up here, and I think something on the lines of this might be good. Or, in fact, let's open up the hex grid. Maybe even, like, right over here. So we have the planes right next door. That'd be perfect. I like this a lot, because we also get the xenomass, the fibers, and the chitin. Uh, and let's take a look. One, two, three... One, two, three. So we'd be overlapping at the chitin over here and the planes, but that's about it. That's not that bad, actually. Okay, just explore the tip over here, and you are good to go. Perfect. There's also some algae, so you know what? Let's correct this a little bit. One, two, three. Actually, you know what? You picked that up. One, two, three. Yeah, you get the algae, so you know what? That's still fine. All right, let's just explore this northern coast and uh, follow it down. We're going to have a lot of tensions in this area because, well, first and foremost, it's a gigantic forest. And it seems like the gigantic forest areas house the alien nests in, you know, force. Um, despite, you know, the planes being kind of open and non-eventful. Uh, that being said, I don't know exactly if the alien nests can spawn anywhere else other than a forest. But that's all I've seen right now. Apparently... They are usually found on Xenomass, which is right... Oh my, that's 10 Xenomass. Let's see what this one is. Three. Okay, so now I found why it's beneficial to kill an alien nest. There is 10 Xenomass, as opposed to the three that you might regularly find. So that is a very, very beautiful tile, might I add. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, no, you're fine. Just stay where you are. Oh, quests! Since opening our clinic, the populace has been split by an ideological divide. Securing and improving our new territory has put great strain on both our military and civil workforces, and both contend that the hazards they face should be offset by state-sponsored healthcare. Our fledgling colony does not have the resources to do both. Which, then, has the greater need of aid? Provide care for defense workers or civil workers? Defense provides 15 city hit points from clinics, or... Um, civil workers provides plus one health from clinics, and considering we're starting to fall already, I'd like to grab the healthcare. Well, the civil workers. 
Sorry, but um, I'd rather have more health. 